So, who's ready to talk about another terrible book? Hi, my name is Rachel and today we're talking about the Sunderlands book one in the Worlds of Orium series. The, the what of the what of the I don't know this series uh, by Anastasia King, which is a pen name, which we're going to talk about in a second. This video was commissioned by one of my patrons, Talia, who did not like it and wanted me to suffer as she has suffered. I gave this book one star because it failed to do anything except be weirdly misogynistic. I don't understand what is with the misogyny written by women lately. What's happening? I'm gonna give you the synopsis and then we will get into my review. I have a lot of things to say. Oh, I'm cold. I'm actually quite cold right now. A kingdom of men is pushing the elven clans of the Sunderlands over the brink of extinction. The mortal counterpart to the god of death, Karis, has the power to stem the tide of bloodshed. Is she? I read the whole book and I don't remember it being that way. As brutal civil war threatens to tear her homeland asunder, she struggles to control her gift without succumbing to a curse of unslakable bloodlust. When her people are attacked, she can no longer hold back. The beast within awakes. Gods know there will be no redemption on the other side of her revenge. Am I reading the right synopsis for the right book? Because this doesn't sound like the book that I read. Oh, that's it. Okay. Wading deeper into the darkness, plaguing her land, unraveling the secrets of her heritage, Karis faces a greater challenge, finding her place in this world or being broken by it. Many seek to tame her and use her as a divine weapon, including a knight desiring to claim her body and spirit. As the war between man and elf stains the Sunderlands with innocent blood, Karis must make a choice, save her people and damn her cursed soul, or forsake the gods and her homeland to gain freedom. Note, this story is not suitable for persons under the age of 18. Before I get into the nitty gritty of this, I have to say a few things. First of all, thank you for being a friend to my patrons, my Therapy Bills patrons in particular, and they are Elena, Amanda, Ashley, Carlin, Claire, Ella, Eric, Harley, Jack, Jill, John E, Quinn, Kate B, Lee, Lex, Molly, Rain, SJ, Sierra, Scarlett, and Zachary. Thank you for being a friend. I appreciate y'all. This book is um like fairly well known on the TikTok dark fantasy romance scene, I think. I've seen it a couple times talked about on my For You page, but I never knew of any friends who read it. Um Yep, that makes sense now. The author chose the pen name Anastasia King, and I'm going to read for you something that was on her website. It has since changed. Here's what was on the website, AnastasiaKingBooks.com. If you Googled the name, you'll find something interesting alongside my books. The story of a woman who was murdered by her husband the same year I learned to write. So not only am I sharing her name with stories that boldly focus on female empowerment and freedom, uh, no. I like to think I'm carrying it on, telling stories for someone who was silenced, and for myself and anyone else who need to be reminded of how powerful their voice and stories are. The real Anastasia King was a mail order bride who was murdered by two men, one of which was her husband, the other was a tenant in their apartment complex. Trigger warning for domestic violence and murder against women. When this timestamp is gone, I am no longer talking about the violence against her. She was strangled by one of her tenants while her husband pinned her down and then buried her in a shallow grave. So for the author to be writing a dark romance with a woman who faces rampant misogyny and physical violence from men claiming to love her, who she goes on to have a sexual relationship with two of those men and she gets choked. Somehow this is supposed to be this author um, telling a story for a woman who was silenced. <sighs> Uh, I just don't think that that's okay. I really think that if the family of Anastasia King were to find out about this, they would be probably pretty pissed off and uncomfortable. I don't know. That's just really fucking weird. Anyway, the author has changed her website's biography and has never addressed how shitty and weird that is a thing to say. Now it says that Anastasia King sounds like a porn star's alias, but originally she said she didn't want the name Anastasia Knight and just changed it to Anastasia King because that was the alias of an actual sex worker Anastasia Knight was. Even though the author
Oliver also says that she at one time was a sex worker. All of this is just like feeling extremely reminiscent of another popular TikTok author who, I don't know, says weird stuff and then the book has weird stuff too. Book actually, actually those two books share a lot of similar like craft issues and issues with like the theme of misogyny. So anyway, all this to say, buyer beware and let's get into the actual book. I have honest to God no idea how to convey the plot in this book because there really wasn't one, which is so disappointing. I really love plot. I've talked about this. This has everything that I like in books uh, in used in its marketing. Like this was my light lark, right? The, this, the, this, <laughs> this was marketed as being about the servant of a death god using death magic, angry woman main character, a midwife of death, dark themes, villain origin story. Like hello, my favorite book is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. It's right up my alley. Uh, villain, villain origin story is my, is my shit. And if you want an actual villain origin story, you should read Fury Born by Claire Legrand. It's great. This isn't that. This should have been a hit, but the author doesn't know what she's doing, so she can't write me a hit. Had these things actually been utilized well on page or utilized at all in some cases, this might have actually been a more enjoyable read, but I can't think of a single thing. Like, I, I'm trying to be nice in the new year, and I'm like, maybe every book doesn't deserve a one star. And then I ask myself, did you actually enjoy anything about this book? And I'm like, well, no. And I'm like, then it's a one star. You have to, you have to do the thing. This is a one star. I can't think of a single thing that I enjoyed about this. The writing style is not good. She doesn't know what she's doing. A lot of times the things that she would write, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, huh? Like for instance, she would switch back between using male and female and man and woman, which <sighs> I know that Sarah J Mass uses male and female in her writing and I already hate that. And I know that all the SJM folks are like, well, it's cause they're not human, they're fae. I know, at least Sarah has that excuse kind of, I think it's kind of weak as an excuse, but at least she has that. This book has no reason to be using man and woman and the male and female back and forth. Why are we, we know that sex and gender are not the same. It's 2023. And yet we're using them interchangeably. Why? Why are we doing that? I don't like it. There's no rhyme or reason to the switching back and forth. I also just, I in general hate referring to anything by sex. I think that's stupid. Whenever I'm talking to a man and he said, well, females, I always ask him, female what? Female what, sir? Female what? Female seahorses? Female cows? Like, what are we talking about? Anyway, I don't like it. I do not like that. Sometimes she would like capitalize human and sometimes she would not. So just in general, like the way that she's using different races and then the gender of those races, it's all, there's no fluidity here. It's very confusing. She did that with actually more than one, more than just human. Like I don't understand like why sometimes things were capitalized and why sometimes they weren't. It was, there was just no, <laughs> really was no care taken here from a craft standpoint. Um, she mostly stays in Karis's perspective. Karis is our main character, except when she would randomly throw in a perspective from like Karis's sister, Lyrian, I think was her name, or the guy that Karis cheats on her husband with and also her husband, who she doesn't like very much. And I don't understand why any of those dudes exist anyway or why she fucked either of them or why I needed to see it on page because neither of those dudes were the actual love interest of this story. The love interest of this story gets introduced at the very end and his name is the Grizzly King. Okay, I don't get it. The writing style does not feel like the author has her own voice. I've talked about this before. This is a problem with TikTok authors. They read SJM and a couple of other series and they're like, got it. I can write my own story now. And I'm like, no, not yet. I mean, you can, but you should, you should slow down. You should wait until you've gotten the hang of what your own authorial voice is, what, what you sound like when you are typing and not when you are just trying to emulate stories that you love. Because I can tell, we can all tell. <laughs> It just, it, it just sounds so wonky. Like it's, it's just not good. It's like, I'm trying to be SJM, but dark. It's like, okay, but you're not doing darkness well. And you're also not Sarah J Maas and you don't need to be. You can make your own voice and make that interesting. And instead we got this. Also, can I talk about this cover for a second? The rest of it is cool, but the, the, the arrows, why is it sitting on top of a wolf? Is he carrying the arrows on his back? And if so, why? I'm confused. The rest of the artwork is great, but that little piece, I just kept finding myself staring at it. Why is the wolf carrying the arrows. What's happening? The author is trying to do so much in this book, right? And she has too many eggs in far too many baskets. And she doesn't take the time to really like cultivate a single thing here. There's no singular aspect of the story or the characters or the themes or the world or the magic. Like if you would ask me about a singular thing of these and ask me to like really distill it into a few words, I would just be this gif of Elmo shrugging. She creates a pantheon of gods, but then you leave the book having completely forgotten about all of them 
because they're all off page and they also don't really play a part in the book. She has her main character be so overpowered. Randomly powers would just keep showing up and I'm like wait when the fuck did Karis get fire magic? Um her magic magics aren't her, even her fi defining characteristics but neither is basically anything else. I don't know who Karis is. She's apparently the midwife of death which we never see her doing on page which god damn it what a fucking wasted opportunity. She talks to her dad at the beginning of the book and he's like females are illiterate and I'm like where the fuck did the misogyny come from let's talk about the weird and unnecessary misogyny because after that line which came out of nowhere it just keeps coming up randomly and never addressed and also it doesn't make sense it's always confusing for me when a woman writes a book that says they want to empower other women yet they write books where women or females are shat upon uh, in conversation but not in systems so the magic system it is not anti-woman the politics not anti-woman the like jobs not anti-woman it's completely uneven and purposeless. There's no nuanced conversation, no interesting new takes on it. There's nothing. It doesn't come up in like marriage roles other than the one place it actually does come up in this book is sex. So we have the main character marry a guy who she was promised to a knight, um, which like for some reason Karis is the daughter of there were three women who were like in line for the throne and Karis was the daughter of one who didn't get the throne. So her cousin is the queen but for some reason like everybody in her fucking family gets promised to a knight except her sister I don't know it none of it makes any fucking sense it's all stupid she doesn't want to marry him but he wants to marry her so that he can lock her down because he thinks that she has fucked some other guy named Darius who said that he would break her over his back and then threw her in a river a river that she previously as a kid drowned in and then came back to life under the like the, the death god like is is in charge of her now I don't know all of it was so under done I am so fucking confused. So she marries this dude and has sex has like this very sad sex with him and then she ends up being like I never should have married him I'm gonna go have sex with Darius he is the one I should have given my body to and like okay why do women think of themselves like that but the men don't think of themselves like that. <laughs> in sex we have misogyny? Why? That makes no fucking sense. So she does end up fucking Darius, the guy she wished she would have lost her virginity to, I guess. Again, virginity is a social construct. He says during sex, <clears throat> he calls her killer, by the way, because she has bloodlust, which I don't know if that's literal. She actually craves blood or if she just craves violence. It's unclear from the text. He says during sex, you're so tight, killer. It feels like you're brand new. <laughs> take harmful views on virginity for one million, Alex. That's not how vaginas work, first of all. Uh, I feel like a person with a vagina would know that, but mm, here I am. And secondly, and third, why is a woman's virginity or virginity adjacentness a prize for men? That's misogyny and infantilization. It's gross. I don't understand how a woman my age with internet access could have written this and thought it was a good idea. Um, this isn't dark romance. It's the same incorrect and tired bullshit that men have been telling us about ourselves for decades and I'm fucking over it. You're so tight killer. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Um the misogyny is not the only thing that's uneven here. The religion is also it, it there's no fluidity, rhyme, reason, or sense to it. The culture of Karis's people, um, the elves that she's a part of, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like they are elves running around barefoot all the time and they don't eat animals, but they do wear fur. And they're supposedly supposed to be like really connected to the earth, I guess. But this feels so disconnected from the rest of the book because it's not actually important. It's just like an idea that the author wanted to like impress upon you once and then do nothing with. She like obviously thought that it sounded cool, but then never takes the time to be like diligent about sewing this into the book in ways that it makes sense like in conversations or in rituals it's just like a throwaway factoid one amongst many the prose isn't always bad i'm trying to be nicer and point out where books go right you know and like do good descriptions you're welcome but these <laughs> i only found like two times where i'm like oh good description one was its black limbs unfold and curl in natural ways its fingers grasp and unfurl stealing inches of the room that's a really cool way to talk about like shadows you know, taking, uh, uh, like taking across a room, right? What? Taking up space across a room. And then 
uh, Beyond the Veil of Magic, Veil was capitalized. I have no idea why. A loft perches in the branches, content as a sparrow in a ship mast. Those are great. Um, really good visuals and that adds something to when you're reading. Unfortunately, she really struggles to keep that trend up. She says things, says things like the wind catches its breath. I don't, I don't understand that. The same wound gaping open in my heart widens Kamira's eyes. What? It's remarkable how alike their eyes are, how they give off the same energy. What? The author says that there's people of color in this book. I didn't see any. Um, there's basically no queer folks in this book. I only can think of one and pretty sure that he got murdered like really quickly in. It's clear that the author really just wanted to write smut and that's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with just wanting to write a sex scene, but you, if you're going to write a fantasy romance, you, you have to, <laughs> fantasy readers are going to read this through a lens of wanting a good fantasy book, and this is not that. I don't think her sex scenes are any good. Um, I think they're like weirdly misogynistic and like obviously very centered on like the man feeling masculine and putting a woman in her place, and <sighs> because of the way that she like almost dedicated this book to a woman who was murdered by her husband I could not unsee that reading the sex scenes another person may read this and not have that experience I don't really know how to talk about the sex scenes other than again talk about the fact that he said you're so tight killer you feel brand new it just that's that was really the end for me <laughs> of being able to take you know it seriously and also like the sex scenes just feel sort of pointless they feel like they're just sort of there to show like oh a woman can have sex with other people before she meets the ultimate love interest and it's like okay but like why did we have this arranged marriage plot at all why is Darius even here he sucks he's weirdly misogynistic he says weird shit while they're having sex the weird talking about virginity is uncomfortable and like there is no relationships with these people like I don't give a shit about her husband I don't give a shit about Darius I don't give a shit about the guy who shows up at the end all of this is stupid and it's not just the love interests that I feel have no real like connection relationships it's also her friends so now I'm gonna go through like what happens plot by plot okay or what plot point by plot point okay we open our main character is the midwife of death but she refuses to do her job because nine people have been slaughtered thanks to the human sometimes capitalized sometimes not she wants to get revenge and she's in this conversation with this woman named Kamira who's like hey you need to do your job as the midwife of death and she's like I refuse and stop calling me by my first name but then she gets called by her first name like throughout the rest of the book and it's not a problem weird continuity stuff already ch like this jumping out right at the beginning oh I forgot about the whole yeah she says repeatedly my bowels turn to water you get instant diarrhea why anyway okay I mean it's like prostaglandin in this in, in elf anatomy just like a super bad problem because like we could I mean no actually I don't want that I don't want that in a fantasy never mind she dumps all this info about the pantheon I immediately forgot she brings up things like hollow children I have no idea what those are it's capitalized it should be important I don't remember what that is at all she says that death is upset because mortals were never meant to kill but then like she is the death goddess's hand no the death god's hand but then she says death himself or myself so are you the same person or not she has this person in her head who seems to be the death god but it's not explicitly said whether that's the death god or not so nine of her people were murdered including her best friend she gets really upset she goes off to her aunt and her husband and her aunt's like you need to go out in the forest and do your bloodlust thing and kill a bunch of the humans and she's like okay but I can't control it on my own and her aunt's like too bad bye okay she sends her off by herself but her aunt's husband is like uh, I didn't think you could do it alone so she kills a bunch of people and she's about to kill more than nine people which apparently would even the score but any more than that is too much and that's bad for some reason I don't know and her aunt's husband shows up and keeps her from killing them um, but then they get caught and then she does a bunch of bloodlust murdery stuff I don't know and then she goes back to talk to her aunt and her aunt's mad because she didn't keep it under control even though she said that she couldn't keep her bloodlust under control 
I don't know. Then we have this arranged marriage plot where she has to marry this night dude and he's like you're having sex with Darius and she's like I'm actually not but okay. Her and Darius are flirting. She gets married to I think his name was Silas. She gets married to Silas. They have sad mediocre sex and then we basically never hear from him again. But we do hear from his girlfriend who he was fucking at the Capitol because Karis goes off to the Capitol. The queen was murdered who was her aunt and her cousin is like I don't know who killed my mom and then there's all this like politicking that was super stupid and boring and then it's revealed oh her cousin's actually like got a god in her head and she murdered her own mom. And I'm like man this is so lackluster and I do not give a fuck. She gets yelled at by her mother-in-law because she fucked somebody else and her mother-in-law was told by her <laughs> by Karis's husband's girlfriend who he fucked and that's a problem. I just don't understand why the only misogyny allowed here is misogyny in, in who's allowed to fuck who. Anyway, I was kind of hoping that Karis would like just abandon all of these men and fuck this girl that w kept showing up, but she never did, which was such a disappointment. I don't even remember what happened to that girl. It went right over my head. And her husband faces no consequences. She faces no consequences. The girlfriend basically faces no consequences, but she like hates the girlfriend for having slept with her husband who she doesn't even like or want to be married to. At one point she says, uh, uh, at one point her cousin says to her, it's a deadly sin to betray oneself. You wanted to be with with another you married Silas out of duty. It's a deadly sin to betray oneself. Is that in the religion or is that like a personal? See like I don't know because I don't know about the religion enough to understand it or their connection to the earth and like how that plays in the religion. None of this makes any fucking s None of this makes any fucking sense at all. Speaking of not making sense, I forgot to bring up the super fun description of where it says that Karis could hear the hairs rising on a man's skin. Like a spidey sense? Okay. I don't understand like the rela the relationship she had with her best friend Kat who died at the very beginning and then she didn't midwife her body which I also like isn't shouldn't she like be really broken up about that? Shouldn't everybody be mad at her for not doing her job? I don't get it. I don't get it. She goes to Kat's house where her mom is and her mom's like Kat would have wanted you to have these books. Your daughter just died and your concern is to give her best friend her books? I wouldn't if my kid died I would not be giving any of his shit away. All that shit is staying in his room and I'm gonna go and cry over it and nobody better show up at my house. I don't give a fuck if you were their friend. I don't understand that at all. As a parent, I don't get it. I don't know. That was, I feel like that was just a way to try to like cultivate like an understanding of their relationship but it just doesn't seem like actually rooted in reality of like how a mom would act when their kid just died. There's a battle at the end. <sighs> I don't know it all got super convoluted and confusing because none of it was like rooted and like you didn't have a really good grasp and foundation because the author never took the time to cultivate anything it was just sort of like we're here and now we're over here and we're at the capital where her cousin is the queen and I have no idea how long it takes to get from one place to another and then suddenly we're fighting humans again and then suddenly Karis's dad got murdered it was just like what are what are we doing then they go off to talk to the grizzly king and he like immediately just like force kisses her and also her sister has some kind of some kind of power very confused at the end and then it turns out I guess the grizzly king is gonna be the love interest <sighs> am I gonna read the sequel yeah because my patron commissioned me to read both of them isn't that great for me Whoa. <laughs> Um, this book is terrible. It needed so much help. It needed so much help from a team of beta readers who actually knew what they were doing. Oh my gosh, like if, if I had been on this, like I, it, I, I spent all this time trying to tell you what happened. It would take me twice as long to write up notes on how to fix this and what my um, ideas were on how to fix this because I would basically have to spoon feed the author a plot because there isn't one. I'd have to spoon feed her the idea that you have have to create your own lore. You have to actually weave all of these things that you want in your book throughout with fluidity to, to make it like actually important to the story and therefore important to your readers. She did not do that. If you like like sex I, I, in, in a different world, I don't know, maybe you'll like that. But if you like plot, if you like interesting characters, if you like seeing themes play out, if you like things that make sense, you're not gonna like this. If you want a book that is actually a villain origin story, which where? Where is... I don't understand. If you want an actual villain origin story, I recommend Fury Born by Claire Legrand. It has some, you know, like dark romancy things, although I don't think that at any point it ever says like this is okay or good, but 
but it does explore what it means to be so beaten down that you become a villain and then you know you explore being like the worst possible version of yourself. I think that Furyborn is a great place to do that. If you want to be in the head of somebody who is just really awful and villainous, uh, read An Ember in the Ashes and read the the real Karis, <laughs> Karis Materia. She is the true villain. Like read her shit, read her POVs. There's just so much better books out there and this is just so incredibly subpar. So that's my review of the Sunderlands book one of the, what is this called? World of Orium? Orion? Something. Anyway, thanks again to my patron for commissioning this. It was terrible. I just, oh my gosh, it's hard for me to even give feedback on this because it was just so bad. I didn't know where to begin. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> Help me. My brain cells. I was robbed. Thanks so much for watching. If you have read this and you want to explain the plot to me or try to, please do so down below nicely. Uh, and thanks so much for watching. If you want to join Patreon, you can do so down below. Commissions might be open. I don't know. I, at this point, I kind of open and close them willy nilly. They might be open. You can check them out on my Kofi. And uh, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my potato starch Marxists. And those are Abby, Aiden, Alicia, Allison, Andy, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ava, Bibi, Beth Ann, Ray, Brittany, Caitlin, Carlin, Catherine, Kathy, Celia, Cheyenne, Chris, CJ, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deandra, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorian, Douglas, Ebby, Eden, Elise, Aaron, Faith, Gloria, Grace, Gracie, Haley, Hannah C, Hannah T, Helen, Horror Goose, India Inks, JT, Jen H, Jen with two N's and an H, Jillian, Joni, Jules, Kaylee, Kate, Katie O, Katya, Keely, Kelsey, Kylie, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, LP Cowling, Martin, Maddie, Marcella, Marquita, Malara, Model RK300, Moog, Morgan R, Moth, James, Nat, Nicole, Nicole M, Nicole R, Nicole T, Paige E, Paige P, Peggy, Pixel Stars, Rachel B, Rachel S, Rachel, who is my friend on Twitter, Reba, Ren, Robin L, Rowan, Sammy, Sarah, Scarlett, Shanae, Shannon, Shay, Sheena K, Shiny, Sean, Talia, Tiana, Ursula, Valentine, Winter, Writer A, and Yesenia. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Thank you.